Thank you for joining me. It is May 14, 2022. I got a quick update for you guys. I'm here in beautiful, sunny Colorado and uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update. So as you guys have seen over the last week, the markets have absolutely dumped. Uh, one of the biggest disasters in cryptocurrency history was Luna and uh, pretty unfortunate to see that happen. But now you see why we call this the greatest transfer of wealth in world history. I tweeted this out uh, just a few days ago that not everyone's going to make it out to the other side. So what they are doing right now is they are getting you to play around with Luna, the meme coins, these DeFi's that are unsustainable. We knew that they weren't going to last. You're playing with all that in the NFT world, 99% of them, no utility. And all, all the while, behind the scenes, they're building the infrastructure with real utility, right? And they want us out. So this is all part of that. This is all part of the shakeout that we've been warning about for a while. Now, obviously, going back to January, we thought that we were going to get the alt season pump for XRP and for the rest of our altcoins. We thought that they were going to go on a tear. Alt season was going to, you know, not make us, uh, not create generational wealth, but at least, you know, make a little bag for us. That has not happened. And now we're back down to, I don't even know what the price is. I haven't checked in a couple of days, 30 cents or whatever. Uh, I think we're holding 40 cents. But regardless, uh, the point being, guys, Right now, uh, I got this tweet here from Crypto Whale. The crypto crash has already wiped out more wealth than both the 2000s internet bubble and the 2000 great financial crisis. Throw back to just a few short months ago when 90% of crypto Twitter hated on me for being bearish at 69K. So on December 4th, 2021, I predicted that we were going to enter a Bitcoin bear market. The part that I got wrong was I didn't think that another top was going to, or I thought that another top was going to come in. Um, I thought that we were going to set a new all-time high for Bitcoin and then we would enter the bear market. That didn't happen. We just had a 40% mass liquidation event on the new moon of December 4th. And that basically started the bear market. So we were partially right. We missed another top coming in, but it was important that we got that call because there wasn't many other people that were really calling for us to enter a bear market during that time. There was a few people. And the, the way that we positioned ourselves was in these altcoins that we suspected were going to go on a tear as it usually happens after Bitcoin tops out, Ethereum and the altcoins then go on a tear. Well, here we are in May. That hasn't happened. The SEC Ripple lawsuit continues on and uh, we're stuck holding this bag. But that's fine because all the cryptos that I hold, I'm fine holding through this 50%, 70% down turn in the market. And in fact, I just continue to accumulate. Um, over the past week, I bought more XRP, bought more XLM, and I haven't made it back to my coin dealer, but I'm gonna be buying some more silver as well. Uh, and, and so it's important to realize that, you know, as people are still asking, are we in a bear market or not? You know, we definitely are. The bear market started back in December. And a as I predicted, you know, Bitcoin wasn't gonna go back to a new all-time high. Bitcoin wasn't gonna go to 100K. And, uh, you know, obviously that was not, uh, that was not popular. That was not a popular take back then. And a lot of people hated Armas for saying that. But uh, going forward here, I wanted to point out the fact that now we have exchanges relisting Luna. So this tweet from Stefan Huber, uh, this is absolutely nuts. $30 billion in losses within a day, and now they're relisting it. But XRP is too dangerous and centralized. This space is completely rigged, absolutely rigged. So this was from yesterday. Binance will resume spot trading for Luna. They, like I said, they want you to continue playing with Luna. I know some people in my Discord bought some Luna and I've heard of other people doing it. Some people have made some money, but we saw that they have gone back and they've reversed a lot of the trades from that time period when we had the flash crash and then it recovered. I think it did like a 30, 60,000% recovery pump which is absolutely massive, right? I mean, you could have made a bunch of money, but this is why I don't play around when the markets are doing this. The exchanges will screw you over almost 99% of the time. So some people, you know, there's gonna be a few stories on TikTok. Some kid's gonna say, oh, I turned 500 bucks into five grand in a, in a day. Um, that's cool. We'll see if their trades get reversed. But the fact of the matter is, is they want you playing around with Luna. 
Luna is a VC coin that was pushed into the space, complete Ponzi scheme, backing their stable coin by Bitcoin. I mean, <laughs> we really didn't expect that to go anywhere, did we, right? I mean, come on, um, absolutely ridiculous. And uh, we knew that it was gonna fall apart, but it was backed by Mike Novogratz and all the VCs, all of the Ethereum free pass monopoly guys, same, same type of crowd got their hands in on Luna early. And so they pushed it to the masses. They pushed it on you and they want you to continue playing. Even after this whole thing's erupted and collapsed, they want you to continue playing with Luna, continue playing with the hype instead of stacking XRP at 40 cents, instead of stacking XLM at 13 cents, XDC, I don't know what's probably at five cents right now. You know, the real utility that they're building out the infrastructure behind the scenes with that we talk about on a daily basis, that's what I'm going to be continuing to accumulate while all of this noise is going on, while they're distracting us with so many different things. And just looking here at the cryptocurrency space, it's an absolute joke that they are still trying to push Luna. Um, the founder came out yesterday and he said that, I, I don't know, they're going to re reissue a billion tokens, divvy it up, try to make things right. There's no making this thing right. It's done. It's dead. Close the door, you know, turn the key, shut down the business. Potentially you should be tried for crimes. Um, you know, the SEC and, and even though I'm not a fan of the SEC and our government, they probably do have a case against someone like this that was downright committing absolute, uh, you know, manipulation and fraud behind the scenes. But uh, yeah, so while they're distracting us with all this mess, I'm gonna continue stacking the actual utility coins that they're building out the infrastructure with. Now, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. This tweet from Jeremy Hogan last night, Solomon continues to amaze. Solomon is just an absolute killer. He takes the finding that the speech was Heyman's personal opinion and shoves it down their throats pretty hard. The SEC really messed that up. How can Heyman receive legal advice from the SEC lawyers for a personal opinion? But Solomon also plays a veteran move in responding to the SEC and argues that only Hinman has the standing to even raise the privilege and not the SEC. So basically, only Hinman would be allowed to have this attorney-client privilege, not the SEC, because this was just with Hinman. It's good legal work to take an issue down to a basic premise. Is this even the proper party to object? Hence, King Solomon. So this is great. This is a great response. I'll read real quick here for you guys. This is uh, King Solomon right here. He says, this is wrong for four reasons. First, the record in this case demonstrates that Mr. Hinman delivered the speech in his personal capacity. He sought input from SEC colleagues as to how best to package his remarks. That certain colleagues discussed legal concepts in some of their responses does not in imbue them or the other communications with any attorney client privilege. Second, Circuit law makes clear that advice on policy or messaging issues, even from lawyers, is not protected by the attorney-client privilege. Second, while Mr. Himmon was entitled to communicate with the SEC lawyers and receive privileged legal advice when discharging his role as the Director of Corporate Finance, the communications about the substance of his personal remarks are not within the scope of any such attorney-client privilege. Third, the communications at issue involve no confidential information concerning the agency that would be protected by the attorney-client privilege. Finally, even if the SEC could establish the elements of the privilege, which it does not, the SEC at most would have identified a privilege claim that it lacks standing to assert because the privilege would belong to Mr. Hinman and not the SEC. So, Ripple lawyers, absolute killers, the best in the game, and uh, they continue to just dissect the whole SEC argument as, I, as I've been saying, the SEC never had a case, and the further this thing goes on, they are just shredding the SEC, and, uh, you know, I love to see it. Now, we're going to get a reply to this response uh, next week on May 18th from the SEC. So the SEC has until May 18th to respond to this. So we'll see what they have to say. Now, in regards to uh, XRP, we are at the lowest XRP RSI since 2015. Now that's the relative strength index. It's one of the uh, metrics that they use in the technical analysis to figure out the relative strength of a particular stock or crypto. So we're at the lowest level since 2015. There's not much lower that we have to go from here, guys. During this time, um, what, what happens is when there's blood in the streets, people end up waiting for the world to end. 
right? They, they don't take action. It's so dramatic. It's so crazy. It's so chaotic. They see the blood in the streets and they go into hiding. The other thing that happens is that people start making calls for ridiculously low prices. Um, someone in my Discord just asked me or, or mentioned that there's going there's a rumor going around about 10 cent XRP. This is the same thing that always happens and how I got burned last time. So in the March 2020 um, dump, XRP had already gone down to 10 cents and I didn't buy at 10 cents because it was so scary and it was so bad that I thought that we were going down to five cents. So I waited. I didn't buy at 10 cents because I thought we were going to five and I ended up missing the opportunity to stack 10 cent XRP just two years ago. How crazy is that? But, um, you know, I'm not saying that we can't go down to 10 cents. That's, you know, definitely in the cards. Uh, I mean, it would be pretty crazy to see that. We still have a lot more pain to come. Um, but, but the point being is, is I'm not waiting. You know, I see blood in the streets. I'm making my moves now. I'm taking action now. I'm going to start accumulating now. If it continues to get worse, we just take even more action and, and continue to double down on what got us here, which is investing in these utility coins that are building out the infrastructure of the new financial system that we know we are on the brink of. I don't care about the noise. I don't care about the distractions. Right now, and, and in, this, in this video here, I've basically been focused on cryptocurrency. I could talk for a whole nother half hour, hour about the food shortages, baby formula shortages, um, China locks down, lockdowns, everything that's going on, right? It, it's absolute chaos. And then in the crypto markets, they've just killed us. A lot of people have capitulated. A lot of people got wiped out. I mean, I've already heard of people even taking their own lives. I mean, this is a serious situation. But for us, there's a reason why I've held these bags, why I've continued to stack these coins. It's because I know where they go. I, I know where this path takes us. So it's going to be a bumpy ride, right? There's twists and turns, and uh, we're going to fall off course here for a little bit. But at the end of the day, we stay on target, which is a new financial system built around XRP, XDC, XLM, Algorand, IOTA, and then maybe a few other cryptos. But personally, I'm only stacking XRP, XLM, and silver during these times. When I get back home from vacation, I'm gonna be stacking some more silver, um, continue to stack my Second Amendment precious metals as well. And uh, you know we're just gonna ride out the storm. But the point being, guys, I don't want you to wait around for 10 cent XRP. I, at least I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise that. You know, nothing here is financial advice, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm buying now. I bought as soon as it dipped below 60 cents, I bought. As soon as it dipped below 50 cents, I bought. Um, and, and then I continued to buy it. I, did I just buy at 40 cents? I might've bought some more. Um, I probably need to buy some more after this. And I don't care about the price. I don't care if we go down another 20 cents. I'll go buy more. And if you don't have money to invest, that's why we've been talking about your side hustle. That's why we've been talking about getting your OT at your job, right? Pull as much cash as you can, get ready. You need that dry powder so that you can take action when there's blood in the streets. Guys, it's messy out there. Um, I have 100% conviction in everything that I hold right now. And I hope you guys have similar conviction in your holdings. You shouldn't have to ask an influencer, is this a good coin? You should know, you should be doing your own research. And at this point, um, you know, there's there's not many coins that are going to make it to the other side, guys. I, I'll be honest. Um, that's why I don't spend my time looking at other coins. It's because they're just not at the table. They're not at the table doing the deals with the people that matter. They're little cute little coins that get you excited because they have 40% APY. They're doing some other bullshit that doesn't matter. They're not sitting down with the Bank of England, with our Federal Reserve. They're not ISO compliant. They're bullshit, guys. 99% of them. Stop wasting your time. Okay? All right. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna continue enjoying my vacation. Um, I don't know, I might get in like a TikTok live. We, we might do one live stream while we're here on vacation. But other than that, I'll be back in a few days and uh, we'll be back into it next week. Oh, before I go, the full moon is tomorrow. Okay, and the, we got a full lunar eclipse as well. Uh, what is this, super flower moon or something? Um, so we'll watch this one closely. You know, either way we go, it's gonna be dramatic. I think either we go you know, one more test to the downside in a heavy way, or maybe we start to reverse out of this and we're in the clear going forward. I, I think that um, even if we do have uh, a little bit more turbulence, I think that we're gonna start into an accumulation phase here shortly. I don't think that we go too much more to the downside. So 
start accumulating, take advantage of these prices, have your buy orders set. If we do go down to the downside, have your buy orders set so that hopefully the exchange will get your order through. With that being said, I appreciate all of you guys. If you want to support our channel, if you want to support our community, if you want to get into the Discord, it's all over at zachbrechter.com. I appreciate all of you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care and God bless.